Hello dear students. Welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself Mihir Mistri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on second law of thermodynamics and in particular today we are going to discuss about some numericals. Okay, so let us start with the given data. So as you can see over here that on the screen a cyclic heat engine operates between a source temperature of 800 degrees Celsius and a sink temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. Find out the least rate of heat rejection per kilowatt net output of the engine. Now here students if you observe then cyclic heat engine is given in the problem. If you have seen the previous video of examples then in that video we have take two de devices that is uh, refrigerator and heat pump. Now the device is heat engine. So remember and keep one thing in your mind that heat engine is power producing device. Clear? So that you should consider always. Now one more thing over here. Cyclic heat engine is operating. So as you can see this is heat engine. Let us draw the block diagram. Okay. Between source temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. So 800 degrees Celsius if you convert it into Kelvin that will be 1073 Kelvin. Right. And sink temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. Right. So sink temperature is 30 degrees Celsius equivalent to 303 Kelvin. Right. So now you know that heat engine will do what it will take heat from high temperature reservoir it will do some work and it will reject the heat to low temperature reservoir simple fun right so here find out the least rate of heat rejection least rate q2 that should be least okay per kilowatt net output of the engine so per kilowatt net output that word is very much important over here students by meaning of that is per kilowatt that means your work done or power produced is given as 1 kilowatt. Okay, so that it is indirectly given in the data. Okay, so here we will write W is equal to 1 kilowatt. Clear? So Q2 list that we have to find out. So whenever I have already told you, whenever you are using uh, or you are experiencing the words like least, reversible, Carnot, then you shall consider the Carnot reversible cycle. Okay, okay. Now, here least rejection in case of heat engine is only possible when the heat engine is working on Carnot cycle. So we can consider that the given heat engine will work on Carnot cycle. Clear? So let us start the problem. So for least heat rejection, what we can do is efficiency is equal to 1 minus T2 by T1. Remember students, for Carnot cycle efficiency, eta is equal to 1 minus T2 by T1. Otherwise, in terms of efficiency, if you, if you want to write down efficiency, then you have to write efficiency as eta is equal to 1 minus heat rejected by heat supplied. Right? But here, we will write it in terms of temperature because you know that if reversible or Carnot cycle is there, then you can take the ratio of heat transfer equivalent to the ratio of temperature transfers corresponding to the hot reservoir and cold reservoirs. Okay, so here also we will do that same thing. So 1 minus T2 divided by T1. So T2 and T1 we have. So if we will substitute the value, so we will have the efficiency equivalent to 0 0.71. Clear. Now further, we also know that, that the efficiency is equal to work done divided by heat supply. Right. So heat supply will be equal to work done divided by efficiency. So from that work done is given, that is 1000 watt and efficiency is equal to 0 0.71. Okay. So Finally, the heat supply will be 1.4 kilowatt, right? So now you can easily find out the value of Q2 because we know that uh, heat engine energy in is equal to energy out for the heat engine, right? So if you will apply that funda, so whatever arrows are coming towards the bubble of heat engine, that will be considered as energy in. Whatever arrows are moving outwards from the bubble, that will be considered as energy out. Okay, so here Q1 will be energy in and W and Q2 will be energy out. So we will write according to that the equation Q1 is equal to W plus Q2. So what we are supposed to find out our interest is in finding out Q2. So make Q2 as the subject. You have the value of Q1 and W. So final value of Q2 will be 0 0.4 kilowatt. Okay. It is very easy to understand. Right everyone. Okay. Now we will move forward to next example. Somewhat much more complex 
example a heat pump working on a reverse carnot cycle takes in energy from a reservoir maintained at 3 degrees celsius and delivers into another reservoir where temperature is 77 degrees celsius now here if you observe students heat pump is the device that is given correct now on a reverse working on a reverse carnot cycle that is a very important word right so that means if we have heat pump which is working on reverse carnot cycle so we can take all processes as reversible okay so that is important for us it takes in energy from a reservoir maintained at 3 degree celsius now this heat pump is taking energy from the reservoir which is maintained at the temperature of 3 degree celsius so here you can see on the screen that uh, 3 degree celsius reservoir is uh, placed at the bottom now i will convert 3 degree celsius into kelvin so that will be equivalent to 276 kelvin very easy to understand and it delivers it to another reservoir where temperature is 77 degree celsius so here i will deliver it to the another hot reservoir where the temperature is 77 degree celsius that is equivalent to 350 kelvin okay now the heat pump drives power for its operation from a reversible engine right so heat pump is uh, gaining the power for its operation for reversible engine right now you know that students that heat pump will transfer heat from low body temperature to high body temperature right so in order to do so you it will require some work from external source so what here the given thing is here it is telling us that this heat pump is gaining your power from external source that is a reversible engine okay so we are, we have over here a reversible engine from that this heat pump is gaining the power okay so that is what the meaning of that sentence okay now this reversible engine is operating within the higher and lower temperature limits of 1077 degree celsius right and 77 degree celsius now here you can see that this heat engine is operating between 1077 degree celsius that is 1350 kelvin and 77 degree celsius that is 350 kelvin okay because you know that the function of heat engine is to transfer or convert the heat into work and the function of pump is to transfer heat from low body temperature to high body temperature so we have combination of two devices observe over here students that is how the complexity of the problem has increased previous problems were having only one device now we have two devices combined together okay T4 is equivalent to hot body reservoir that is 1350 kelvin right and T3 is equal to 350 kelvin okay now let us move further so here for 100 kJ per second of energy supplied to the reservoir at 77 degree celsius right so now here so is important data is given that is for 100 kJ per second of energy supplied to the reservoir at 77 degree celsius now you can see over here that the reservoir which is at 77 degree celsius it is getting heat from two devices that is from heat engine also and heat pump also so that means we have a common reservoir of 77 degree celsius or 350 k so what we can do is right now that this q2 and q3 both heat transfers are equivalent to how much 100 kJ per second right q2 is equal to what heat rejected by heat pump to the reservoir at 77 degree celsius and q3 is equal to what heat rejected by heat engine to the 77 degree celsius reservoir so what given data is 100 kJ per second of energy supplied to the 77 degree celsius reservoir so how much energy is supplied 100 kJ per second so that means in total now you observe that total that 77 degree celsius reservoir is gaining q2 plus q3 and that is equivalent to 100 kJ okay so i hope you can see that on the screen right now estimate the energy taken from the reservoir at 1077 degree celsius that means whatever amount of energy or heat transfer you are doing from 1077 degree celsius reservoir that you have to find out we have named it as q4 okay so let us find it out now what i will do students over here that 77 degree celsius reservoir is common for both the device so i will replace this drawing by a common reservoir let us observe that see right 
So now we have a common reservoir. Now it will be easy to understand for you guys that now Q2 and Q3 is equal to 100 kJ per second together. Right? I hope you can appreciate this fact. So we will find out, try to find out Q4. We will start the problem with the help of one T that is heat pump. Okay. So let us start the problem for heat pump. So you know that heat pump, in order to evaluate the performance of heat pump, you know that you have COP, coefficient of performance. So COP is equal to what? So T2 divided by T2 minus T1. That is equivalent to COP. Okay. Now, sir, how this equation can be written? Because I, I have already told you students that COP is equivalent to uh, desired effect divided by work done. So here if you observe this heat pump, so for this heat pump, what will be the desired effect? Now observe the two temperatures of the heat pump. Okay, so one temperature is 3 degrees Celsius and another temperature is 77 degrees Celsius. So now the agenda of using the heat pump is what? To uh, hot or keep the body hot as far as possible. Okay, that is the agenda of heat pump. Okay, you are supposed to maintain the hot body temperature constant. That is the agent of heat pump. So now corresponding to that, the desired effect will be equivalent to Q2 divided by work done. You know, work done is equal to 1W. Now if you apply the energy balance, then what will happen? W plus Q1 is equal to Q2. So if you make W as a subject, it will be equal to Q2 minus Q1. So we will have, if you will write COP, now you uh, write it down on your notebook and you convert it into temperature, write it down, COP of heat pump will be equal to what? Desired effect, that is equivalent to how much? Q2, right? So Q2 divided by work done and work done is equal to how much? Work done is equal to Q2 minus Q1, right? So now, can I write the heat transfer ratio in terms of temperature transfer ratio? Yes. Why, sir? Because reverse Carnot cycle word is used. So I can replace the heat transfer ratio by temperature transfer ratio. Okay. So that is why I have directly written over here T2 divided by T2 minus T1. Now substitute the value of T2 and T1. T2 is equal to 350 Kelvin and T1 is equal to 276 Kelvin. So we will have the COP of the heat pump as 4.729. Now you also know that students, that COP of the heat pump can also be defined as Q2 by W. So Q2 by W is equal to 4.729. Now Q2 is equal to what? Make it as the subject. So Q2 is equal to 4.729 into work done W. Now also you can write work done is equal to how much? So work done is equal to, you can write that work done is equal to Q4 minus Q3. Sir, how have you written this? Because see, we have common work done for heat engine also and heat pump also because whatever work is produced by heat engine that is directly supplied to the heat pump. So you can write for the heat engine if you write the energy balance then what will be that? Q4 is equal to Q3 plus W. Right? So W is equal to what? Q4 minus Q3. So that is how this W is equal to Q4 minus Q3 is written from the energy balance of heat engine. Clear students? Okay, now what I will do? Now I have Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 100 kJ per second. Observe the green highlighted data. Okay, so in that equation I will make Q2 as the subject. So make Q2 as the subject. So what we will have? We will have 100 minus Q3. Q2 is equal to 100 minus Q3. So here in this equation, in place of Q2, I will write 100 minus Q3. That is equivalent to 4.729 into Q4 minus Q3. Right now we will try to solve the remove the brackets and solve the equation in a simple way. Okay, so now by doing so, you will have the final equation as 100 is equal to 4.729 Q4 minus 5.729 Q3. Right now, let us name this equation as equation number one. We will keep that equation to the side. Okay, now let us jump to the another device that is heat engine. Okay, remember this this green highlighted equation that is 100 minus is equal 100 is equal to 4.729 Q4 minus 5.729 Q3. That is equation number one. We are keeping that equation on the side. Now let us observe heat engine. So for this heat engine, you know that the efficiency of heat engine can be defined as what minus heat rejected by heat supply. But instead of heat rejected and heat supply, you can write down the corresponding temperatures because reversible engine is given. So that is why what minus T3 by T4, right? So what minus T3 and T4, we have the value 350 Kelvin and 1350 Kelvin. Substitute the value. So you will have the value of efficiency, right? And the value of the efficiency is 0 0.7407. 
right? So efficiency is also equal to work done divided by heat supplied. That is equal to W divided by Q4, right? We will make W as a subject, so we will have E time to Q4, right? Also, you can write W is equal to what? For the already we have discussed, W is equal to Q4 minus Q3 is equal to E time into Q4, right? So now Q4 minus Q3 into E time is equal to how much? 0 0.7407 into Q4, right? So now if you will resolve this equation, then we will have relation between Q3 and Q4. Okay, students. Now remember, our aim is to find out Q4, right? So now we, I have two equations. Observe over here. Recall the equation that was named as equation number one that is shown over here in the screen, highlighted by green color. So we have these two equations and we have two unknowns. So you know that if you have two equations and two unknowns, you can solve the equation easily. So solve this equation. What I will do? I want to find out my agenda is to find out Q4. So I will substitute the value of Q3 from above equation into the below equation, right? So if I will do so, right? So I will have the final answer of Q4 as 30.83 kilowatt. Okay, so that is very easy to understand, right? So that is all for today's lecture. Thank you.